Illinois Fudge with Shoreline Marine Products. I've been a certified marine mechanic for over 25 years and I'm here today as Captain Weekend. Today I'm going to share a variety of easy boating projects that you can do yourself with the common tools that you've probably got in your toolbox right now. I'll be by your side every step of the way and together we'll install a variety of top quality Shoreline Marine Products to get you back on the water faster. So let's get going. Grab your tools and I'll share my tips and tricks so you can easily install those new hot shoreline accessory and replacement parts and be your own Captain Weekend. Hi, this is Lloyd, Captain Weekend with Shoreline Marine Products. Just getting ready to go fishing this weekend. Checking all my systems over, found out my bilge pump doesn't work. Now I gotta figure out why. Gonna come in with a test light, make sure I've got power going to it, also ground, and then we'll go from there with it to see if our pump's bad or if I've just got a wiring problem. All right, first thing we wanna do, wanna make sure we've got power and ground all the way back to the bilge pump. Of course, on my boat, my battery's at the other end of the boat, so I've taken a long wire, connected it to the positive side of my battery. This will enable me to check my ground side of the pump. Back here at the back, all I do is connect my test light to the wire, the black wire coming off the pump. I have a light, so I've got a good ground at least back here to the pump. Now I'll go move my wire at the battery over to the, positive, to the negative side, and then I can check my switch power make sure I've got po positive back here at the pump. Now that I've got good ground side, I've got to change my wire at my battery over to the negative so I can check the positive side wire back here. That switch power, so you got to make sure your build switch is turned on, probe it, and you're ready to go. So now I know my, my bilge pump is bad, I'm going to replace it. While I'm replacing it, I'm going to go ahead and install a float switch in it so I'll have an automatic float bilge pump also and be able to not worry about it if I leave it at the dock, it starts raining. I know my float switch is going to turn my bilge pump on and pump me out and not have to worry about coming out in the middle of the night and flipping my bilge pump on to get my boat pumped out before it sinks. One thing I noticed when I was down in the bilge checking out my bilge pump is I've got a lot of leaves and dirt down in the bilge. What will probably happen to your, my bilge pump is it's gotten clogged up by the leaves, locked my bilge pump up, melted it down, therefore I have a bad bilge pump. What I need to do once I get the bilge pump out and get ready to install the new one, make sure I vacuum and clean everything up in the bilge so I won't be having this problem again. Real easy to get out. Two little prongs that stick up in the base. I just unsnapped them, pulled my bilge pump right out. Now I just have to loosen my clamp. Slide it down, twist the pump, and it comes right out. A lot of times on really old, old motors, You'll have to cut your hose and break it loose and then you can replace the hose or it should be long enough where you're pulling an inch out of it. You can just plug it right back in and go on about your business. I've got my bilge cleaned out, got all the leaves vacuumed out, all the extra debris. I'm ready to go back together with everything. I've actually taken the time and run a positive wire up to my battery because I'm hooking the new float switch up to it so I'll have an automatic side in case I decide to leave it at the dock one night and we get a rainstorm. I'll be able to come in and still have a dry boat that's afloat and not in the bottom. My bilge pump, I've pulled out, disconnected. The base on the Shoreline Marine Products pump snaps out. We're actually getting lucky because this pump actually will fit into my old base. My base is good, it'll snap right into it, so I don't have to worry about replacing my base at this time. However, if you're in a situation where you're changing out a pump that's not the same bolt pattern or screw pattern going down into the bottom of your hull. This has multiple ways to be able to be mounted. You can mount it to, on the side of the bilge onto a stringer. You can mount it at the back onto a transom using the back bracket. Or you can still put screws straight down into the hull and not have to worry about moving everything around, extending your hose or anything else. If you have to put new screws down, an easy way to do it to make sure that you don't actually drill through the bottom of your hull Pull one of your old screws out, take a piece of tape, lay your screw up here, the depth that it was actually inside the hull, take the piece of tape, 
wrap it around your drill bit at that depth, leave a little flag on it, and then you won't drill all the way through your hole. You'll drill just enough to get your screw started in there, put a little sealant on there, you're good to go. An alternate method to put your base down in case you don't want to drill into it is to use a good marine grade sealant, glue it down to the bottom of your boat. You have to make sure that your hole is clean, no oil residue or anything. Got to make sure it's really good and clean, otherwise you'll have a chance of your sealant popping loose from your hole and then your bilge pump flopping around in your bilge. I like to have make sure everything is screwed down as opposed to glued down. That way I know it's there, don't have to worry about it down the road. The nice thing with the Shoreline Marine bilge pump and float switch combo is you actually get stainless steel screws that come in it. You don't have to go hunting around the hardware stores looking for the right length and right size screws. They're already in the package. Right drill bit, you're ready to install it. Okay, we're ready to install our float switch. We want to find a location in the bilge where the float switch is actually higher than the bilge pump, at least level with it. That allows, as the bilge pump is pumping out the water, your float switch will start lowering. When it shuts off, your bilge pump is still in water and not pumping air. If you reverse it, your bilge pump is going to be pumping air, your float switch will still have it on, and it'll run a chance of burning your bilge pump up. Okay, we've pretty much found the location that we're going to mount our float switch at. Set the float switch down in here. I've already got the bilge just snapped in right now. Nothing's wired. I have the hose connected to it just to make sure I don't have any binds or anything in the hose. I have plenty of clearance for my float switch. The nice thing about these float switches is the two places that you put your screws. There's a slot on one side and just a hole on the other side so you can actually mount one of the screws in once you have it marked and drilled in the bottom. You slide the float switch in, drill the other side, put your screw in, and you're done. Okay, I'm going to take a marker and set my float switch where I want it, mark my slot, and I'll be ready to drill the hole. Still have the tape hooked up on the drill bit. Drill my hole down to my tape. Then I can take my screw, put a little sealant on the hole, Go ahead and start the first screw. Now I'm ready to slide my float switch in. Then I can take my drill, drill my new hole. And I'm ready to put my other screw in. Put a little sealant on the screw. Slide her into the hole. Screw it down. Don't over tighten it so you break the plastic. You have a float switch installed. Not a problem at all. We've got our float switch installed. We're ready to put our bilge pump in and wire everything up. I'm just going to set the bilge pump in down here right now. Don't have to have it up or anything. We've got a red and a black wire coming out of our bilge pump. We have two black wires coming off of our float switch. Off the float switch, it doesn't matter which wire you use, it goes to the red wire. Some of the bilge pumps will have a red wire, some of them will have a brown wire. Doesn't matter, you use one wire going to the bilge pump. And then off your switch coming from your console, the brown wire normally, you'll connect all three of these wires together for your B positive or battery positive. That's your power going to your pump. Your other black wire coming off of the float switch will go to the positive wire that we've already run up to our battery that'll have a fuse in it, usually a seven and a half amp fuse, which will protect your wiring going to all the way up to the battery in case your pump shorts out or you get a nick in a wire and it grounds out. We've got our wires connected. Heat shrink buck connectors are melted down. 
We've got them painted with liquid electric tape. We're ready to go back together with the rest of our pump. One thing you want to notice, we've got one of the black wires from the float switch. The red wire or brown wire coming from our bilge pump is connected to our switch going up at our console. And then our other black wire coming out of our float switch is hooked to our red wire, which runs up to our battery. Now we make sure that we have our clamp on our hose, put it together, tighten the clamp up, snap our pump in, pump snapped in, and now we just got to clean our wiring up. You, you want to make sure that your wires come up from your pump and go up above the water level in the bilge that you might have at some time with all your connections just for added protection for corrosion. We have our project done. Float switch is installed. Works properly. All of our wires are pulled up. All of our connections are above the water line to make sure that we don't have a corrosion problem later on. Our clamps tied on our hose. Now if we want to, we can plug, plug in our bilge pump, fill it up, make sure our float switch works and cycles properly, check the manual switch on the bilge pump, make sure it cycles properly, and we're ready to go fishing. A couple other options that we have for the bilge pumps. In our boat, we were able to put an actual float switch in it, we had plenty of clearance, didn't have to worry about it getting blocked so it wouldn't work or anything like that. We have one that has an integrated float switch in it. It's a magnetic switch, 800 gallons per hour. Has three wires coming out of it, real easy to install. Red wire will go to your battery positive or to the auto side of a switch. Black wire goes to ground. And then your brown wire will go to the manual side of your switch up on your console. If you don't have an auto switch in your boat already and you want to put one in, we have a panel that's already made up, has a three-way switch for manual, off, and auto, has a circuit breaker already in it, have your old switch that's just a manual switch, you can take your positive off of it, hook it right to the circuit breaker, everything's wired, run your wires up to your switch, done deal. If you don't want to add an auto switch, you can always take the red wire off your bilge pump, run it straight to your battery, make sure you put an inline fuse in it to help protect the wiring that you have in your boat. Just a quick note when you're installing your automatic bilge pump, red wire is B positive, battery positive. It goes straight to your battery or the auto side of your switch. If you don't want to install a manual switch, take your brown wire, cut it off, make sure you secure the end of it and put it up above the water level. That way any corrosion won't work its way down your line and get into your bilge pump.